Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. After everything we've been through this year, the apostolic imperatives in today's epistle lesson from Philippians 4 may sound like they're being meant for someone else. When so many are despondent and depressed and sad, Paul is telling us to rejoice always. When so many want the world to see and feel their anger, he says, let your moderation, your gentleness, your forbearance be known to all men. When so many are anxious about threats to their physical health, their livelihoods, education, communities, country, and life itself, he says, be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious. When so many hearts and minds are in turmoil, he tells us to expect peace. You know, joy and peace are words that we throw around at Christmas like tinsel on a Christmas tree. But with everything we've gone through, and an uncertain road ahead, we might ask the question, is this message for us? Or is this just happy talk that ignores the reality happening in our world? Before we jump to that conclusion, know that Paul himself is writing this letter from prison and was no stranger to hardship. And the Christians to whom he was writing were perfectly aware of their vulnerability to pagan social pressure and persecution. So Paul still finds reason for joy and peace. Maybe there's something we can learn from him if we have an open mind to learn. For Paul is not only telling us what to do, those apostolic imperatives to rejoice, to forbear, uh, to be not anxious, to pray. He's also give us, giving us a reason why the apostolic indicative. And the reason why is this. Just five words. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. It's the message of Advent. The season which teaches us to look for the Lord's coming. The Lord is at hand, and we know what to expect from his coming, because he's come already, and in the manger made our plight his own. When we were far off from God, he came near to us, and to help us in our misery, who is all mercy. There's no grief or pain or sorrow of man in which the Lord has not shared and no sin for which he did not shed his most precious blood, who endured so much wrong to set us right, the just for the unjust, to bring us to God, and by his dying to give us life eternal. How could we not look with expectancy and eager longing for his appearing? It's the expectancy of the Virgin Mother, awaiting the imminent birth of her child. It's the expectancy of the Church, the Bride, looking for the return of the Bridegroom, Christ, to set all wrongs to right, to bring to fulfillment the redemption that He wrought. It is the expectancy of the believer, who knows that in every circumstance, the Lord indeed is at hand. He stands among us to save and deliver, to bless and hallow the people who turn to him in faith. In this Lord, we will rejoice always, even in our sorrows. And for his sake, we will show all men the same gentle forbearance under provocation that he showed for our sakes. The Lord is at hand. The one that the Baptist says is already standing among us, just as he came and stood amidst among the disciples after the resurrection and turned their sorrows to joy. This same Lord, by his own promise, 
is at hand wherever two or three are gathered together in his name. And he is at hand to hear the prayers of those who call upon him faithfully. And so St. Paul tells us to be careful, anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. When we turn our cares over to God in prayer, we have the assurance that he makes our cares his own. And he will deal with them in his own way and in his own time, not according to our dictation or agendas. But Paul says that we must make those requests, not with the greed of the ungodly for earthly goods, but with the thanksgiving of the Christian who sees that all things are grace. All things we know, even the bad things, or perhaps especially the bad things, work together for good to them that love God, to those who are the call according to his purpose. Therefore, when we let our needs be known unto God, in prayer and thanksgiving, Paul says that the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It is the peace of God, not of man, because it's not dependent on earthly circumstances. It is based simply on our knowledge of his good will toward men, first revealed in the skies of Bethlehem. And it is a peace that passes all understanding, because the unbelieving world cannot understand how there can be joy in the midst of sorrow, forbearance in the face of provocation, peace in a sea of troubles. Whatever the tribulations we may now have in this world, Jesus says that in him we may have peace. Whatever mistakes we have made in the past, in him they have no power over us. The powers of forgiveness and regeneration he released are at work. And they are delivering us from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Before us lies the sure and certain hope of deliverance to glory and joy in the very fullest measure. Every tear turned to laughter. And even our present tribulations are working to our benefit as God sanctifies us in them. It's only as we choose to turn away from him in forgetfulness or fail to recognize his presence it's only then that we let the demons of darkness into our souls. Anxiety, anger, depression, despair. But that is all our doing. It is not his. The Lord is at hand. And that makes a decision possible for us. The possibility of deciding in tribulation to choose joy in the Lord instead of despondency. In the face of provocation, to choose forbearance instead of rage. Amid troubles, to choose the prayer of thankful trust instead of anxiety. That God's peace may stand guard over our hearts and minds. That's the choice which he sets before us. That's the decision that we are called to make. And if you doubt your capability to make that decision or to carry it out, the Lord is at hand to help if you call upon him. O come, thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloom.